this is Colin Rennie here and welcome to the second of a series of 10 videos introducing you to the basics of Rhino and how to model in three dimensions. Um, today I'm going to be showing you the curve tools which are up here on the left hand side. I'm going to show you the basics of drawing and drawing in, in, in two dimensional space and three dimensional space. Um, and uh, I'm going to be introducing you as well to a few of the snaps down here as well as some of the functions within the command bar. Uh, okay, so without further ado, let's start. What we're going to do first, though, because we're working primarily in top view here, because I'm just doing drawings on a flat plane, is I, I don't really want to have to look at all of these different viewports, so I'm going to maximize my top viewport, so I've got a little bit more room to work, and you can see this a little bit more clearly. Um, I'll start with a polyline. A polyline is a, a straight segment of line or line segments going from, from one point to another point in straight lines. Um, and as soon as you click the tool, you'll notice that the command bar changes and says start of polyline. Rhino is asking for information. It's asking you to define what the start of the polyline is. It also gives you an option which is persistent close equals no, and that's to do with how the line ends. If you want it to close round in a loop, you can make it do that deliberately by saying persistent close and it equals yes, and you do that by clicking it. Um, but I'll keep it as persistent close equals no. Now, you can define a point to start your line just by clicking and clicking again, and that'll give you a line. Um, to complete the line, it says press enter when done. You, so you can keep clicking, but when you finish, you have to press enter to complete the line. Now, I pressed enter on the keyboard there, but in Rhino, enter is synonymous with a right click as well. If you're in a command, enter is right click as well. So if I'm drawing a line and I go click and I, and I click again and I right click, that will end the line. Okay, um, that's, the, that's the equivalent of pressing the, pressing the enter key. Um, to close a line, meaning to, to close the loop of a line, if you hover back over the initial starting point of the line, if I get close to this, and then it will pop up with a thing that says point. And the point is the end of the, the, well, the beginning of the line. Okay, So if I was to click that, it now has closed that into a loop. So that's what we call a closed line or a closed curve. Um, now you can make Rhino close the curves for you if you click this again. You'll notice that it's it's got close here, and you can just press that close, and it will close the line um, and finish the line to its original point, its starting point. Um, you can also change the way that you close line. If you have consistent close equals no, if you say yes, it would automatically when you finished it, it would it would it would finish that. It would have closed that over if, if persistent close equals yes. Um, I'm going to show you now, this, this, so the, the polyline tool draws line segments, or straight lines between points. Okay, the, the tool next to it is the control point curve. Now, that is what you would, you would consider to be um, a curvy line. So here's a, here's a line that's got some curvature to it. And if I move it up and down and choose different places, it will, it will move up and down. But notice that the, the dots, the clicks that I've done, are because I'm in the command, I'm still drawing a line. I haven't finished yet because I haven't pressed enter. The, um, the dots are still visible. And those dots are um, um, the com they are the control point locations for this line. They're not on the line. They're where I clicked, and I'm clicking to produce a control point line. So where I click is where the control point will be. The control point is not the line. The control point is like a, a, a pulling, a magnetic pull on the line itself in order to generate curvature. It's not a point through the line. There is another way of doing that. Um, as well. So that's a control point curve, and you can also we close lines in the poly in the polyline, but we can also do the same with the um, the, the um, control point curve. If I'm to, to do four or five points, and if I hover over the first one, you'll see you'll notice that this changes now. It, see it it clicks into um, an ovoid form, so I now have a closed ovoid. There's a seam in there. This seam there will move very smoothly. It won't move with any kind of kink in it. Uh, and later on, when we do other functions with surfaces, you'll see where that seam is. But the, to, to all intents and purposes, this is a smooth, round, curved line with no beginning and end. It's been closed off end to end. Um, and um, we'll, we'll, we'll see the reason for that a little bit later on. There's various functions where you can't work with closed or open lines together, for example. 
Um, the tools underneath there, we have circle and ellipsoid. If we click circle, it's basically just a way of drawing a circle. Now, the, the, the standard way is circle, center, radius. So the first point is the center. The second point is a point on the radius. Uh, so it's a two-point um, definition of a circle. Um, but there are other ways of doing it, which we'll come to in a minute. Uh, the next one along is an ellipsoid. An ellipsoid, unlike a circle, requires three points. It requires two radii, a long radii, and a short radii in order for it to be ellipsoid. If the radii are the same, it's a circle. Uh, this is arc, which draws a proportion of a circle. Uh, this is rectangle, which draws a rectangle. This is a polygon tool, or the n-gon tool, which will draw a number of different polygons. At the moment, I'm set to the number of sides equals 8. By default, I think Rhino has a number of sides equals 5, which is a pentagon, and it will draw you know, this pentagon here. But if you wanted to change that, if you click it, it says number of sides equals 5. If you click that and type in 8, you can draw a hexagon. Or if you wanted to, you could do the same tool again. And you could say, I want 100 sides to my polygon. And you can have this. And if you zoom in on this, you'll, you'll see that there are straight line segments in that. Essentially, it looks a bit like a circle. Um, so that's the polygon tool. Um, this is the fillet curves or the, the, the curve editing tool, tool as well. Um, and we'll get to that a little bit later on in, in, in the next section. The first thing I want to show you, though, is, is basically that every tool within Rhino, like we covered earlier on, every tool has got a flyout menu. Well, not every tool. Every tool with a corner uh, that's, uh, that's, that's blacked out has a flyout menu. And the same is true with all of these ones in the curve tools. Um, every single one has got different options. So the polyline has got lots of different ways of drawing curves drawing, drawing uh, lines, and the curve tool's got lots of different ways of drawing lines. So, for example, this is the interpolate curve. So, whereas before, when we drew a curve, we drew the control points and the line was not attached to the control points, in interpolate curve, the control points, uh, or the points that you're clicking, force the line through them. So, the line has to go through that point. Um, and you, you, so you'll see it, it's, forced, it's forced through those points. If you click enter, it will finish that line. Um, I'll show you the difference between the, the interpolated points on a curve and the control points on a curve in a little while. The um, thing about selecting, uh, which is quite important here, you notice I've been um, selecting objects and deleting them just to keep my workspace a little bit cleaner so I can show you a bit more. Uh, I can do that by clicking the object, it highlights in yellow, and I can delete it um, by pressing the delete key. Uh, you can also select objects by dragging boxes over them. So if you were to drag a box from the left to the right, you will select the object that is enveloped by that box. Um, it will only select objects enveloped completely in that box. So if I wanted to select this object but not this object here, and I drew a box like this, this which only contains one object at the moment, only one object will be selected. Um, that's going from left to right in any shape. And you'll notice that the outside of that square, of the, of the rectangle, the selection rectangle, is solid. The line is solid. If I go the other direction, from the right to the left, you'll notice that the box has changed and it's now dotted, or dashed line. Now the dashed line will allow you to select, or the, the box will allow you to select anything that is touching that box, or inside that box. So in this case, it's those four objects there, but not this one here. So this is a really good way sometimes of selecting particular objects. If you drag from, from right to left, you, anything the box will touch will be um, selected. So it's quite useful when you're selecting edges of things, or you can only get at the edge of something to select it. It's a very useful tool for that. Okay. Right. What I'd like you to do for this session is basically to um, have an experimentation with all of these different tools. I'll show you some of them now just to familiarize yourself with them. So underneath these tools, you can make them sticky by pulling them out. Have a shot with all of these different ones and see what you can do. Some of them require you to have more information. For example, this one requires a polygon mesh before you can draw a line on it. This one requires a surface before you can draw a line on it. But most of these other curves will allow you to draw um, in in various ways. So you've got, for example, spiral here. You can you can create spirals. Um, 
of different sizes and uh, different pitches. Uh, you can create helixes, um, you can create hyperbolas, um, all sorts of different shapes you can create. So have an experimentation with the curves tools, have an experimentation with how to draw circles. Um, I'll show you a little example. I'm going to draw a hexagon here. Number of sides equals 8. Enter. So I'm going to draw a set, uh, hexagon. And I'm going to draw this hexagon so that the center of the hexagon is on the 0, 0, 0 point. So I'm going to type in 0 on the keyboard and press enter. Now Rhino assumes that it means 0, 0, 0 in that case. And now you'll see that the, the hexagon is being drawn directly on that point. Now um, I want the hexagon to be nice and perpendicular. So you could have ortho on here and it will only allow you to draw that. That's one way of doing it. So we'll do that. Or well, you could hold your shift key down. Um, I'll take ortho off for now. Now, um, if I was wanting to draw a circle uh, that was exactly the same center as this, so for instance creating a knot or something like that, then you could draw a circle from here. Now, you could, if, if you're clever, you could just think, well, this, the center of these things is co-centric, it's the same center, so I just try enter like this, and I could do that. However, sometimes that's not available, or sometimes you need to work in different ways, and there's lots of different ways of drawing circles, so I'll show you another way of doing that. So say, for instance, that this has been moved off to the side here, um, and uh, it, you, need to, you still need to draw a circle that is taking up um, the sides of this, but you don't know where the center is, for example, but you, you want to be able to draw circles around that. If you click and hold this down, you can actually draw circles with three points. So if you draw a circle from this point this point and this point, then it will be um, mathematically equivalent at each of those points. So th that is a coincident vertice there. That vertice is tangential to that circle. It touches that circle. It doesn't go through it. This one does exactly the same thing, and it's the same for all eight of the vertices of your of your hexagon. They all touch this circle. Um, and, and that's mathematically accurate. Every one of these, is, every one of these gaps is identical as well. Once you have a circle there, you can also get centers, pick up centers off them, things like that. But that that's a, a, a useful little tool there. Um, you can draw circles in many, many different ways. You can draw circles by doing their diameter. You can draw them, again, with three points. You can draw them, um, that one is um, around a curve, but we haven't got a curve to draw from. Or we could do this. And that's going around the curve, but it's actually going around the curve as you can see in space around the curve as if it was a pipe around that curve going all the way around. Um, so it doesn't look like a circle in top view because you're looking straight down from the top of it. Uh, and this one, circle to fit points, is quite useful sometimes when you're tidying up information or you're trying to make something from a, 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 a scan or something like that that has uh, lots and lots of points and you, and you know how it's meant to be a circle so you, you can use that to create um, circles but we, we'll get to that later on. Okay, and this is circle deformable, which again we'll get to that a little bit later. All circles are deformable; you just need to rebuild them. Um, we'll get to that. Right. Um, we've also got the ellipse tool. You can try lots of different things with that. Arc allows you to draw arcs in different ways. So here's here's an arc with a center um, and just defined by two points. Uh, rectangles. There's various options for that, but this tool here allows you to draw rectangles from a center. The default way of drawing a rectangle in Rhino is from a corner to an opposite corner uh, to draw a rectangle. Um, and polygon tool. If you click and hold that, you'll see there's a f there's a whole series of different ways of drawing polygons from the edge length, or you can even draw stars, which allow you to to draw um, cool shapes. So you can have a play with all of these things. Um, you, you, you might find if you, if you make all of these sticky that you have too many different windows open. So just be aware that you want to keep, you keep your workspace reasonably tidy. Um, so those, those are the tools I want you to experiment with. I wouldn't try the fillet curve just yet, just those ones at the moment. Um, the other thing you can experiment with is the snaps at the bottom here. So I've got my O snap on. O snap's being clicked. So this is this um, set of tick boxes is available. And the one I've got here is end. But you can try all sorts of other ones. You can try near, point, and in most cases point won't really be needed um, for, for this type of work. Mid, send, center, in, intersection, perpendicular, tangent. Perpendicular is a little tricky to use. Tangent is a little tricky to use. You need to define two or three points for that. Quad I'll show you as well. Um, so if, if I'm drawing a line 
from uh, one position and I want it to be accurately um, the middle of something, then if I hover over the middle of this, it, it picks up the middle of this, this point here. If I hover over the edge of a circle, you'll see it picks up the send point. And if I, if I click there, it means that I'm drawing from the center of that circle. So I can, I can do a couple of lines here. Also, end will, is this one here. So any of these, um, these snaps that are checked will mean that I have the option to click or to, to, to snap to that particular point uh, within Rhino. So you can, you can make uh, parts that are stuck together like this. Um, and there, that, that point there is coincident. The, mathematically, the end of that line is exactly the same position as the start of this line. And there's no variation there. It will be mathematically precise. Um, the mids are quite useful for finding the middle of things. I'll come to S-Track in a later video about how to get the, through these things. But try using these snaps, try making some objects, and uh, just experiment with how you would build objects and um, how you can snap from one thing to another. Uh, you can also, the snaps will work on the, on the uh, curve tools as well. Uh, sometimes if you have lots of different snaps available here or open here, you can get kind of annoyed by it because you're picking up points and you don't want to. Uh, so sometimes you need to turn them off. So say if I want to go near near this line but not the send, if I have the send clicked, you'll see that often it clicks to send depending on where I am. It will flip backwards and forwards to send. But if I, if I uncheck send, it won't do that. It will only, it'll only pick up the near one. Near is just anywhere on the line. It's, it's just following and hovering along that line magnetically. Um, okay. Enter. Right. Uh, if you want to disable your snaps completely momentarily, you can uh, click the disable tool and then they will all go uh, grayed out so that there's no snaps operating here. So it doesn't matter what you, you do, where you put this thing, they, will, they won't um, operate. Uh, snaps also uh, override the grid snap function here. So grid snap, if I was to take grid snap off and draw some arbitrary positions, uh, arbitrary points and then if I was to go to end you'll notice that that for instance is not on a um, point so there's grid snap that these is, these are grid snapping to the the grid but you also get if I have end enabled here the, the snap will um, override the grid snap okay so you need to be aware of that when you're working if you're working in grid snap and then suddenly you uh, you want to start um, lining things up with other things and you've got objects in the in the scene that are not snapped to the grid the snaps will override that so you need to be careful with that um, but you'll learn that as you go okay so have an experiment with these guys here all these different tools open them up play with them um, try different uh, different ways of drawing circles and just familiarize yourself with the lots of different input output if you're confused at any point remember to read your command bar that will give you the information about what Rhino requires uh, so make sure you read your command bar okay have fun with that and I'll see you next time bye for now